welcome back to ATVG. Today, making a video about Drummond Island Resort and how close everything is to going right out to the trails on the west side of the island. Or the west side of the trail group, I should say. Literally, as we see here, you pull right out. And the trailhead is right here. So where we're at right now is this Maxton Road parking. And we're gonna go for a ride, do some exploring. I've never gone out from this particular spot, so I don't know what to expect. But hopefully it'll be a good time. It's about 6.45 in the morning, so I'm definitely beating the crowd. Here's a slightly different view in the parking lot here and we're gonna follow the main route and then hit some high clearance as you see here and just kind of come around and check it out so it's starting out it out with some pretty rocky terrain I got the Renegade 1000 suspension put on soft so hopefully that helps a little so I just decided I think we're gonna do trail one why? Because it looks cool. So I'm recording my route with a geo tracker. So I'll hopefully be able to get myself back all right. I'm gonna see what kind of mud we can get ourselves into. But this particular video, I'm just kind of aiming to record some of the trail and show off what it is you can look forward to seeing if you come out here and ride in particular from the west side of the routes and especially if you stay at the Drummond Island Resort I mean it doesn't get much more convenient than being able to drive right out from your bed so to speak and be able to come right back at the end of the day and take a shower and go swimming in the pool so I definitely like the convenience of that sliding around a little bit but I brought the drone with me today too so hopefully I can get a few drone shots which is why I'm not just blasting myself with mud right now because it's in my backpack still trying to figure out how I'm gonna carry that along with me and not destroy it while I'm going out on rides like this so at this point I have no idea if I'm still on trail one or not there's been several T's and Y's and uh, unfortunately those aren't marked so I've mostly been staying left every turn so who knows it might loop me back around where I started but that's one thing to be mindful about, I guess, when you're on Drummond Island, especially for the first time, and or riding with nobody, or nobody's been out here before and doesn't know the area, make sure you have a map. And like I said, like I'm doing, I'm recording where I'm going, so if I do have to reference going back, I can do that. But there's a lot of question marks right now. As far as am I going the right way but it is fun getting the exploring in and again I started on trail one and I think technically I'm still on it here's an example of what exploring sometimes gets you into just ran into a turnaround so I'll head back and this time take a right instead of a left but hey that's the fun of exploring so i think one of the things about drummond island that fascinates me the most is just how different the terrain is compared to what you usually find especially as compared to michigan i mean usually in michigan routes and trails you're riding mostly on sand sometimes a little dirt but up here in drummond island 
it's dirt, sand, mud, rocks, shale. And the funny thing is, is you just never know what you're going to run into around every single turn. It changes a little bit in a very short amount of time. So why is Drummond Island so cool? Because the terrain constantly keeps you on your toes. And it does not get boring. So there's one option, but that looks kind of underused. So I'm going to keep heading back to the next tee. Sometimes they're shallow, sometimes they're deep. You never know unless you do a stick test or slowly make your way into them. It's one of the reasons why I like this Renegade though too, because it's gotta be really deep before I start having any type of problems. That gives me a lot of confidence, especially when I'm out riding by myself. seen quite a few deer so far on Drummond Island and they seem to be getting more and more used to people and machines pretty happy with the way that turned out so now the next time I find a spot that looks like it has a decent distance where the trees aren't overhanging too bad I'll send it up again try to get some more good footage but the Skydio 2 plus it's actually a pretty awesome drone as you just saw it follows right along I don't know how the footage turned out as of right now, but I'm assuming it did pretty well tracking me through that area. So in the meantime, I'm just looking for, and that trail looked kind of cool actually, I'm going to turn it around. I'm just looking for the main trail again to get myself back in the direction that I want to go to follow and find some of those high clearance areas that are on the DNR website map of Drummond Island. But I thought this looked neat, so I'm gonna check this out because again, doing a little bit of exploring today as well. All right, coming right into some mud right away. The thing about Drummond Island, besides just the mud everywhere, is most of the bottom is all rocky. So usually the water hangs around for a while, but you also got to be careful when you're going through the mud or the puddles because you don't know if there's going to be a rock sticking up right in the middle. So with the Renegade here, I don't bottom out too often, but it has happened a couple times. And I've been on a different machine too, took the Wolverine out. And that having lower clearance definitely had several bottom out issues. 
even with me trying to avoid it because there are rocks hiding in the puddles. But this is a cool trail. 